Hello all my blessed brothers and sisters, Steve Reed here, hoping to help you change your life and fill it with abundance of prosperity and peace. This is going to be week one in what I hope to be a year-long 52-week training course, coaching course, to help you have better partnership with God so that you can reap better rewards in peace and prosperity. So you'll notice I have also noted on the website, so if you're hearing this somewhere else, you're going to have to go cycle back to get these different quotes and scriptures if you want, but I put them in writing there as well to make it easier for you. And every week I'll be citing scripture at least, if not other things, uh, that help you understand your partnership with God, with Jesus, uh, to increase your peace and prosperity and show everybody in the world how wonderful it is. Um, I'll briefly tell you uh, what's my experience. I've been there, done it. I've had a great abundance of things, but not so much peace. Uh, I went all the way to the bottom, came back to where I have peace and prosperity now, and I believe it's only the start of what's going to be wonderful. One of the keys, I think, is your motivation. Uh, what do you want to get profitable, you know, prosperous for? In my situation, I was pretty comfortable. I really didn't need much more in the way of money. But all of a sudden now I have been sparked to try to raise a ton of more money so that we can use it to make the world a better place. So, and as I do some of these ventures a little bit to cover the cost of what I'm doing might not hurt, but the rest of it's going to charity. Years ago, when I first started and I built up a company that had several locations and over 100 employees, and again, no peace at that time, and making plenty of mistakes and sins and errors and all that, but one of the things I tried to live by, and I even put it on my business card, was a Henry Ford quote. And how it goes is like this. Whether you believe you can do a thing, or you believe you cannot, you are correct. I think the first time I read that I had to stop and think about it for a minute, but it's obviously true. Uh, whether you think you can do a thing, or you think you're not, you're right, that's how it's going to turn out. And as it tells us in the Bible, let's see, I believe that's Proverbs 18, 21. It tells us about the power of our tongue. And again, I believe what the Lord is trying to tell us is, be careful what you think and what you say, because you are more powerful than you realize. God made us in his image. What's that tell you? You have the power to predict your future by what you speak and believe. Give that some serious consideration. And as always, I'm going to suggest as we go through this training course, as you're reading your Bible, as you're studying this material, as you're reaching out to get better on your own, start that conversation with God every time. Stop and ask, Lord, where do you want to lead me? You know, Holy Spirit, help me make the connection and hear what the Lord wants out of me for this. And do it for the glory of God. You know, everything you do, and again, there's several scriptures in the Bible for that, that tell us that we should be doing what we do for the glory of God, not for ourselves. And when you do it the right way, this is when you're going to start experiencing the peace that passes all understanding, the prosperity that you may not have thought was even possible. Uh, I'm seeing miracles done all over the place, from healings to, to finances, and it, a lot has to do with our belief. I know at one point early on in my reading of the Bible, it's like faith of a mustard seed. How hard is that? You know, mustard seed's teeny tiny. But faith is a complete believing in faith. It's not just, oh, I believe in Jesus and move on and do a bunch. Of, it's a complete, I know that power is there. I know it can be done. It's a complete convincing, living in it in your head, speaking it through your mouth. Uh, the power of the tongue, like he told us. So, there's where I'm going to start us off, but I want to go on with lesson one. There's so much, I have no trouble thinking we can get 52 weeks of information in here. And, and my hope and my goal is that well before the year, and I would really appreciate you guys letting me know what effects you're seeing, what changes as we go through this, but well before the year that you start seeing the changes. 
uh, I know you will. Um, <laughs> improvement in your peace and your ability to deal with your life and improvement in your finances and prosperity. Keep your goals right. Make sure you're partnering with God, with Jesus. Make sure you're keeping that communication up there and it will all work out very, very well in the end. So I think the next thing we got to do is clear up some misconceptions because you can't move ahead and be thinking positively and speaking positively if in the back of your head in the back of your mind you still have some uh, misconceptions or misunderstandings about what the Bible is telling you and I think a lot of people live with false beliefs from their early teachings and there's a lot of churches that in my opinion don't teach this right and here's what I'm talking about you've got two testaments in the Bible you've got the Old Testament now help me remember oh I guess here I'll help me remember you got the Old Testament and you got the New Testament the Old Testament was basically where we were told that we had to live under the law what's the law the Ten Commandments how possible was it as failed humans on this earth to keep all the Ten Commandments and keep them perfectly. I don't know about you, but I murdered the heck out of them. <laughs> I made a mess of them. And thank God we don't live under the law anymore because I would have definitely destined myself to go to hell. Good news, 2,024 years ago, which this is ironic, by the way. I want to remember to talk about that in a minute, too. 2,024 years ago, uh, Jesus died on the cross for us, she gave his blood. He, last thing he said, hanging on the cross, was, it's finished. What was finished? The old covenant, the old laws. We no longer had to live by the old laws. We, as long as you are a believer in Jesus and you believe he is your savior, you are not going to hell. It doesn't matter what you do. He's, your sins are forgiven from the past to the present and even the future if you happen to screw up again. That is the honest truth of it. No question about it. Pray on it. Study it for yourself. If you don't believe me, email me. We'll talk on it. And hopefully before it's all done, if you didn't before, you will now believe that is the truth of it. One of the complaints that uh, I hear or fears, I hear people saying, well, if that's the truth, then what's going to keep you from going out and just sinning again all over the place? Well, you're going <laughs> to. I mean, you're going to sin anyway because that's our nature. Thank you, Adam and Eve and all that and the serpent. We can't help it. It's, we're not perfect and that's the way the world's set up. But I do also believe this. The closer you get with Jesus, the closer you get with the Lord, the less likely you are to sin. You're going to start doing a lot less sinning, a lot more giving, a lot more positiveness and helpfulness. It's just going to come naturally out of your connection with the Lord. You know, will you ever screw up? Yes. Do I think it's going to go Sodom and Gomorrah crazy? No. I think it's going to go smaller and smaller every day. I experience this myself. Um, so that's my thoughts on that. A couple things I wanted to r remind you or, or mention or remember to say. One was, obviously, I talk a lot about the Bible and Jesus and uh, the title of the book and the website and this course is to partner with God for peace and prosperity. So surprise, if you didn't know it, I'm going to be talking a lot about it. It says partner with God, not Jesus. So I think Jesus is a particular part. And I think if you're not a Christian, you're going to find this information is going to go a lot better for you uh, if you do become a Christian and no it's not necessary to take this course but I'll bet by the end of the course you're going to say why am I not a Christian <laughs> and get on board that's my prediction for what it's worth so I want to get those out of the way first now back to clearing up uh, misconceptions I think this is another thing that that holds people back sometimes even good intentioned leaders give us information in a misconstrued way. Sometimes uh, we just hear it wrong or forget it wrong. Um, so let's talk about money and the Bible.
<laughs> I think a lot of people think, and I'll be putting out a ton of links in here for you, scripture where you can see, especially A.D., New Testament, Lord wants us to prosper, folks, and give it out to help the world be a better place. But a lot of people say money is evil. It says so right in the Bible. Well, no, it doesn't. What it really says is, the love of money is evil. In other words, if you're doing it just because you love money so much and it's all for yourself and you want to prosper, yeah, that's not a good way to go about it. It's not going to end up working out well in the long run, in my opinion. But money itself to prosper, he'd love it if you were making so much money that you were living comfortable, never worried about a bill, and giving away so much more to help other people, nothing would make the Lord happier. Trust me. Peace. You know, you're when you're upset and you're worried about money and you can't pay your bills and whatever. Remember, power of the tongue, what you believe, either way is true. Um, it doesn't give you peace either. Partnering with God, with, with Jesus, is going to give you a tremendous amount of peace. And God sent Jesus here, gave us his grace, sent his grace here. Glory be to God so that we could experience all this, so we could grow in peace and prosperity. Looks like I've gone about 11 minutes so far, and maybe I'll post a couple videos a week and keep them short, but I know myself, I hate long hour videos, but I want to keep the training coming out and keeping things moving forward. So please feel free to give me your feedback as we move ahead, and we'll see how this all works out. Love you all, brothers and sisters. Can't wait to hear about changes that's going to help in your life and see you going out and spreading more joy and peace and knowledge to all our...